Kamala Harris is having a rally in Atlanta, Georgia tonight, and you have to see the energy among the crowd. Bro, they're there for the free concert, a free Megan the Stallion concert. Normally, her tickets are somewhere between $200 and $1,200 a pop. I hear it. It's free. I hear a it. free Megan the Wait, Stallion yes. concert. Okay, fucking finally. Yes. 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 We're back. We're doing it live. Fuck. For those of you who are new to the stream, sorry, I skipped the epic intro. Look at the other, the last yesterday's stream and you could see that I'll do it again later. But here's the problem. They're creating a false narrative that Kamala Harris is popular at all for one. The other false narrative is that she's black. She ain't. She ain't black. Okay. And it's okay. It's okay. It's not a problem. The problem is that she's been grifting off of being Indian forever. And then now she's pretending she's black as a new grift and the black community won't stand for it. And the truther community won't stand for it. And Trump is pointing it out. So I'm going to have that going here for everybody. Now, right now we're on alt tech, which I, at this point I consider, consider X basically alt tech. When it got bought by Elon, it turned into alt tech. So we're here on Rumble, on Locals, and on X. Join the Free Thinkers Rebellion, support in any way you can. Powered by Locals, powered by Rumble since those fucking thunder cunts over on YouTube demonetized my channel. Now, it's purely by word of mouth and the wonderful algorithms of alt tech. So thank you everyone who supports in any way possible. All right. So moving forward, moving into it, we got Kamala Harris drawing in a concert. Okay. Short version. It's a large crowd. You can see. <laughs> So that's the crowd. And so we knew, we knew it was going to happen. We knew, oops, let me turn that off. We knew it was going to happen that they were going to jump all over that and pretend that she is popular because of it. Okay. And here's the article. We got the article fresh off the press. Donald Trump's crowd size gets put to the test. So Newsweek, those assholes over there decided, boom, we're going to see that Trump's rally popularity, whatever sizes that he's bragged about are being put to the tents to the test because they said Trump is going this Saturday to the exact same venue that Kamala was in, in that video that you just saw. And they're saying that she had the largest, uh, population of size in the crowd of like any democratic event that Biden had, which I mean, it's pretty easy to get more than 20 people in a room that size, but that's neither here nor there, but they're saying it was the biggest democratic rally of the campaign cycle to date. According to the Harris campaign and dwarfed events, Biden held both in size and enthusiasm. The rally was instead more reminiscent of the crowds that Trump is well known for attracting and bragging about. So they're trying to paint this picture, create this narrative that Harris has comparable crowd sizes to Trump. Okay. But here is the reality check, the big reality check. And we're going to look at this both via this older millennial destroying Harry Sisson and then over history because we have recent history where this was used by the left as well. Okay, so let's get into this. Here is the older millennial that we we're trying to share before the audio gods Kamala came Harris after me and decided they were going to uh, try to fuck up the stream for the third time. All right, second time. Better not be a third time. All right, here's the here's the video. Kamala Harris is having a rally in Atlanta, Georgia tonight, and you have to see the energy among the crowd. Bro, they're there for the free concert, a free Megan the Stallion concert. Normally, her tickets are somewhere between $200 and $1,200 a pop. It's a free. A free Megan the Stallion concert in Atlanta, Georgia. Like, bro, Kamala Harris could not show up 
and everybody would be fine. There'd be Nobody no gives less people. A shit. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm sure there are some like old, bitter ass fucking cat ladies in there that are dying to see Kamala Harris. Bro, that crowd ain't there for Kamala. They're there to see Megan the Stallion. They're there to get a free concert. They're there to get an autograph from Megan the Stallion. They're not there for Kamala, dude. Y'all have to stop pretending like Kamala Harris has ever been popular. She ran in the primary. She got less than 1% of the vote. In fact, she did so horrible that she dropped out before we even got to the election year. Please understand that Kamala Harris right now is more popular than she is ever going to be. Because for the last four years, everybody's ignored that she existed. The media didn't really cover her unless you'd said something really stupid. Us content creators didn't shit on her, again, unless you said something really stupid. But she's had a free pass. Don't worry, bro, we get into her. And you can keep calling us whatever you want for insulting her. But the next four months for Heels Up Harris is about to be rough. Let's go! Yeah, I like that. The next four months for Heels Up Harris is going to be rough. I made the stream called uh, Hose for Harris. Maybe that's why there was uh, a bunch of cosmic weirdness that happened to the stream uh but when i restarted it now only on rumble it seemed fine but when it was on youtube and on rumble it was fucking up so what's the deal with that right why are we dealing with this just leave us alone man it's all we want all right but that's that's the point that's the reality and here is the history on this you're saying, I wonder how much the Harris campaign paid Megan the Stallion. I don't know. That's a good question. All right. Well, here's from Cat Turd. Just so you know, like Hillary, Kamala Harris will continue to do rallies with bigger and bigger stars and free concerts to draw a crowd because she can't. Right before the election, it'll probably be Taylor Swift. They did the same thing with Hillary. She had Bon Jovi, Bruce Springsteen, Beyonce, and on and on. When Hillary would speak, they had the crowd screaming so loud you'd think Hillary was actually a popular rock star. It was all staged and fake and gay, just like it's going to be with Kamala. Both are cringe, fake, and extremely unlikable. Here's a picture of Hillary near the election in front of 50,000 people who all came to see the free star-studded concert. So you remember this lame stage strategy. This is what the Democrats do. They pretend that people want to see them and want to hear them and want to come to their events and rallies, but they don't. They pay some actual popular person to hold an event for free with giveaways. And then the people who go to that event for free with giveaways get stuck in front of the asshole politician that nobody likes. It's exactly the same as a timeshare presentation at a free uh, vacation. So like you go to this, you go to this vacation, we'll give you a ski resort situation. We'll give you some coupons for the lift. We'll get you a beer. We'll hand you all this shit. And all these people go for that. And then boom, they stick you with that high pressure uh, presentation, the sales pitch at the end. Nobody actually wants that part. That's just what gets put in their face in order to get the free thing. Are we all on the same page? I don't know if I could be more clear, um, but I will be more rude because I'm so annoyed by this whole situation. All of it. All right. And then we got Trump who talked about it. Crazy Kamala Harris voted the worst vice president in American history, needed a concert to bring people into the Atlanta arena, and they're leaving, and they started leaving five minutes into her speech. I don't need concerts or entertainers. I just have to make America great again. Let's fucking go. 100%. Yes. Donald Trump is going to have... His say this Saturday, and I guarantee you there's going to be a full house and people outside in overflow. Massive. That's what we're going to see. Because it's not real. They don't actually like Kamala. 
And do you know why? Because she's pandering, dude. She's pandering and she's horrible. Listen to this shit. You are Here's Kamala doing her like cringy mirroring technique, trying to uh, identify with the Georgia voters. And you all helped us win in 2020, and we're going to do it again in 2024. In 2024, for, you got a Southern Bell accent now, Kamala? Really, bro? Really? No one believes it. It's cringy and pandering garbage. Now, we got even more cringy, pandering garbage from uh from Kamala so you can hear this the pandering combined with the lies the other hand listen to this Donald Trump on the other hand has been talking a big game about securing our border but he does not walk the walk. Or as my friend Quavo would say, he does not walk it like he talks to. <laughs> Donald Okay, so what does that mean that he doesn't walk the walk with the border? And just to be clear, here's another line, and this is the last line I'll show from that does not but you can hear her talking about trump on the border donald trump does not care about border security he only cares about himself <laughs> and when i am president i will work to actually solve the problem <laughs> so here is my pledge to you. Donald Trump. We got you. Not a chance. Not this time. It never happened. It never happened. We made this one up. Okay. So I'm calling BS on Kamala. She was the border czar. It was her job. It was her main job as vice president to stop the horrible situation that was happening at the border. And they're like, no, she was not supposed to do that. She was just doing root causes, whatever. So she did root causes and didn't stop what was going on at the border. So her sitting there gaslighting that Trump doesn't care about the border is insane. And it's like, when I become president, I'll fix it. It was your fucking job, your only job as vice president to fix the border. And you failed for four years. So you're going to tell us that now when you get a promotion after failing for four years, you're going to do a good job now. Really? I I'm okay. You know what? We're going to share this. This is uh this is Kamala Harris voters today. This is them it says, this is what it looks like if you're voting for Kamala after the last four years. Betty Johnson shared this. I thought it was hilarious. All of you look like this. fact check that was not true because uh, I didn't see any uh, obnoxious looking liberal whites in there but the depiction is pretty pretty great so you got these clueless people staring into their phones feeling you know like they're so giddy about their virtue and the world's on fucking fire and they just don't know they don't care and they're moving on with that okay so I was going to play something funny initially, but I had to like rage through enough to play it. Um, there's, there's this thing where people say minorities must, must 
approve of illegal immigration. Uh, we don't at all, not even a little bit. Uh, I have first generation uh, Mexican grandparents that immigrated here from Mexico. And I would say almost certainly they are aware Well, my grandfather has passed, but he was a Republican when he became a citizen. Uh, and then my grandmother knows how dangerous uh, Mexico is and the border is. I, I don't think that it's the same agreement from that side. So I have a clip to share about that. But first, here is a clip of my Mexican grandma. Not really, but it's so close. It's hilarious. Así se voltean las tortillas. Mira, si ves, órale, volteelas. Pero me voy a quemar. Pues no te quemes, órale, cabrón de veras. Oh, mira, mira, no puedo creer que sean tan pinches inútiles. No quema, mira, 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 mira. Eh, eh, si ves, no quema. Órale, voltea las tortillas. Ay, ¿qué estás haciendo? No, es que no puedo, está muy caliente. Ay, no puedo creerlo, te voy a dar un pinche chingado. No, 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 no. Cabrón, de veras, ¿qué van a hacer cuando me muera? ¿Eh? Se van a podrir. Ay, no, pobrecito de ustedes. Pobrecito. Mira, así. Oh, my God, that's so fucking funny, dude. I gotta be honest, I gotta be honest with you. That's exactly true. That's 100% true. My little, my beautiful, wonderful little abuelita being there with her hands flipping the tortillas on the stove like it's no big deal. 100%. Yeah, Darmac says, LOL, Jeff, it is like your grandma, by the way. Give her some flour and some water and she cooks her ass off. It's true. Yeah, she made tortillas fresh for my grandpa every day i don't ever remember a time where i went over there and didn't see her making a batch of fresh tortillas at some point throughout the day every day that man got fresh tortillas that's like part of the marriage contract over there the way they have shit set up that's just true i don't make the rules man but i'm telling you it's like that kamala harris is pretending that she is black. But is she? Is she actually black? Why, why does it matter? Well, it wouldn't matter if the freaking lefties weren't so obscenely obsessed with race. They stepped in this and now we're gonna rub our face all in it, starting with Donald Trump today. All right, so he had this conversation owns which i thought was great because he was talking to these journalists in chicago and it was like a it was a big um like gathering of i guess it's like a black journalist convention i don't really know the the heritage behind but it's it's pretty funny so just listen to this ownage and questioning and trust me we got receipts to come behind this uh, some of your own supporters, including Republicans on Capitol Hill, have labeled Vice President Kamala Harris, who is the first black and Asian American woman to serve as vice president and be on a major party ticket as a DEI hire. Is that acceptable language to you? And will you tell those Republicans and those supporters to stop it? How do you how do you define DEI? Go ahead. How do you define diversity, it? equity, inclusion? Okay, yeah. Go ahead. Is that what your definition? Give that me, is that. That is. Give me a definition. The then would you give me a definition DI. of that? Give me a definition. Sir, of that. I'm asking you a question. No, no. A you very have to define question. it. Define the. Define it for me, if you. I would. just defined it, sir. Do you believe that Vice President Kamala Harris is only on the ticket because she is a black woman? Well, I can say no. I think it's maybe a little bit different. So, uh, I've known her a long time indirectly, not directly, very much, and. She was always of Indian heritage, and she was only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black, and now she wants to be known as black. So I don't know, is she Indian or is she black? She has always but identified you know as a black woman. I respect she went to a historically either black one. College. I respect either one, but she obviously doesn't because oh. she was Indian all the way, oh. and then all of a sudden she made a turn and she went. She became a black person. Just to be clear, sir, do and you I believe think, that I think she somebody is a... should look into that too when you ask 
a continue in a very hostile, nasty tone. It's a direct question. <laughs> Do you believe that Vice President Kamala Harris is a DEI hire? As I, some I really don't know. Said. I mean, I really don't know. Could be, could be. There are some and there are uh, plenty. I know this lady right over there, Harris, is a fantastic person who just interviewed me at length. <laughs> And we had a great interview, I think, and I heard you got very good ratings on that. Well, interview. you told me it was the longest one of your life, so <laughs> we had a good discussion. And he was talking to, about Harris from Fox News, uh, who happens to be a black woman. So this is really funny because there is no hatred of black folks from Donald Trump. It, it just isn't a thing. So they're trying to to pretend like. Trump has some like massive or racist uh, record with the black community and he doesn't at all. Like he really, really doesn't. So here's Jesse Jackson. I do want to express thanks to you, Donald Trump, for being with us tonight. Uh, we need your building skills, uh, your uh, gusto, um, your rent package for people on wall street who represent diversity and uh we thank you for coming tonight let's give donald trump a big hand <laughs> a big hand for donald trump i will tell you a large percentage of the people and especially in construction that are building these great jobs are black and minorities and I'm okay so you get the idea Donald Trump is employing a large percentage of people generally. And then a bunch of those people in the blue collar jobs that he employed were black people and Hispanic people, generally minority people. He had no issue with them. No love, no, no hatred, no bad record. It's all bullshit. So they're trying to create this illusion that Trump is like the racist asshole guy that hates black people. And it's like, no, he wants everyone to pursue the American dream and to eat and to feed their families. And, you know, saying you should work in some way does not mean that he's racist against people. He just puts people to work. And if everyone's working, they make money. They don't starve. They have less burdening on the system. And, you know, they prosper. It's kind of this crazy thing, you know. Uh, it's it's a struggle to even entertain the idiocy of it. But anyway, you have Trump who's saying Kamala's Indian, isn't she? All right, so now we're going to go through the list. First, we got Judge Joe Brown. I already showed one clip of him, but he's not done talking about it. Very fun. And then she would. Joe Brown has no love lost for Kamala. And then she was everybody's favorite Hindu Indian prosecutor and attorney general and senator. And now she becomes black, but you know, I met a daddy, a uh, fine gentleman, professor Harris. And the problem with her being black is professor Harris says he's Caucasian mixed Irish in Hindu. He doesn't have any black ancestors, but his Irish ancestors owned a lot of slaves in Jamaica and had them to work on plantation. So if mama is on the birth certificate listed as a Caucasian, daddy says he's a Ken Caucasian, Caucasian Hindu and has no black ancestors. How did she get to be black? And then she was everybody's. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's interesting. So, daddy is Hindu Irish. Mama is Indian. How do you get black from that? I'm curious. That's from Judge Joe Brown. Okay. Okay. You can't just, you can't just go on one thing. Oh. Oh, no. Kamala Harris is descendant of an Irish slave owner from Jamaica. Hamilton Brown from Co Antrim was paid the equivalent of 11 million. Is that euros or pounds sterling? I'd, I'm not good with foreign currency. Sorry. Tell me in the chat. 
in compensation by the British government to free his slaves after the ban. So a few things to take away from this. One, uh, she ain't black. She has Hindu Irish slave owner <laughs> on one side of the family uh, and then Indian on the other side of the family. The other part, which you need to see, is that the British government paid out money for people to release and free their slaves. The British government paid for freeing the slaves around the world. Did you know that? Did you know that? So not only did black folks hunt down and capture and sell each other in Africa to the white man and the Asian man and just whoever wanted to buy a person. Black people were selling each other, okay? And then that shit got outlawed by Brits, the evil colonizers, right? The evil colonizers in Britain outlawed slavery and they paid reparations back then except it was called your freedom. They paid for freeing the slaves actively at the time. That's kind of epic, isn't it? That's not really in the history books all that much from my recollection. Anyways, it goes to a, a lot of, it goes to a lot of uh, talking points about Kamala Harris and they're, they're kind of falling here. So that's the one side, the one side, it's like, we got a Hindu Irish daddy, the black dad, Hindu Irish. Okay. Not really seeing that. Then we got uh, Kamala. How about, how does she feel about it? Certainly you could be Certainly, you could become the first uh, Indian senator in U.S. history, which would be quite an accomplishment. Not good. <laughs> She's been doing that damn horrible laugh for years, apparently. That's not, that's not new at all. Okay, you could be, become the first Indian senator. Yes, knock on wood. Okay, so she acknowledges Indian, right? That's what she says. Indian, I'm Indian. Okay, next. But we're going to... 2019. Mindy Kaling, known horrible writer, former good writer at The Office, uh, but then she did Scooby-Doo and just went super, super woke and you just can't deal. All right, so this is Mindy, Indian-American woman with Kamala. Okay, so what we're going to cook today okay. is well, an Indian recipe. Yes. Because yes. you are Indian. Yes, yes. Okay, and okay. I don't know that everybody knows that, but I find that wherever I go and I see Indian people, the uh -huh. supermarket, uh -huh. on the street, everyone's like, you know Kamala Harris is Indian, right? It's like our <laughs> thing we're so excited about <laughs> to have you running for president. So we're both Indian, yes. but actually we're both South Indian. Yes. Um, you look like the entire ha one half of my family. Okay. Thank you. You do. I've been telling people you we're do. related already. Yeah. So this is uh -huh. perfect. It's basically <laughs> true. Uh, and so were you raised eating South Indian food? South Indian food. Okay. Okay. So we got her saying I'm Indian. So, we, so we've disproven that the family on the daddy's side is black because he is Hindu Irish. Hindu Irish. And the Irish part, the white part, right? Slave owners. That's pretty rough, man. Slave owner ancestors. She's got a lot of privilege from that. All right, all right, all right, all right. Well, that's that's just words, man. I think that she grew up possibly kind of black, right? Like, I feel like she's... Maybe it was like just then she's like trying to pay homage to like a, a dead grandma or something. But what about, what about like growing up through life? I mean, it was probably like a pretty normal black American household, right? Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Ah, that doesn't look very black to me. That, that doesn't, it doesn't actually. Kamala. Kamala, you, you ain't black. That's that's kind of the consensus here. I, I'm not seeing black in this photo. Is there any black in this photo? I I don't actually see any. I see a lovely Indian family. Okay. Okay. Which I wouldn't care. Like, it doesn't matter. 
It's just the fact that they're saying she's black, but she's, but she's not black. And here's the AP. Right? Here's the AP. California Kamala Harris becomes the first Indian American U.S. Senator in 2016. And then Biden picks Kamala Harris as running mate first black woman. Where, where did that come from? She is so not black. And I don't care. It's just weird that they're trying to push that on us. And it seems like she's not. But you know what? Maybe she grew up and she got married and her family is like, you know, like a homegrown country, soul food, black family, you know, like that's maybe that's it. Maybe she got back to her roots of blackness when she grew up and got married. And like now her, she has this black, beautiful, all American, you know, just like stereotypical fam family. That's, that's what it is. Oh, oh man. No, it's actually not. Ah, she, she married this, this guy, I'm Hoff, this Jewish guy, super light skinned. The kids are light skinned and like really weird and really not black at all. Okay. So, so your current life with your super rich Jewish husband and his kids, which I'm assuming he's Jewish. I thought he had like a pretty, uh, hold up where it was. That's assumptive. I'm so sorry. That's a little bit assumptive, but I thought I read that he had a, a pretty good job. Douglas, what do, what's Douglas do? Guys, let me know what Doug Douglas does. Doug, Doug. I read it somewhere. I thought that he was uh, relatively successful. Okay. Anyway, so we got Douglas and his two kids. He is Jewish. Uh, not black. He's not black. Okay. So her current day family situation is very not black. Her growing up situation, her dad was out of the picture when he turned when she turned 7 and then she was raised uh pretty much by her Indian family. So it was like just Indian upbringing uh and then the dad was Hindu Irish. So there's no black at all. I'm sick of hearing it. And you know who else is sick of hearing it? Black folks in America. They're sick of hearing it. I got to delete this. They're a hundred percent sick of it. So we got this and then we'll be done with this segment. But I thought this was very interesting. We have, you know, they got white guys for Trump. Here's blacks against Harris going live with 30,000 attendees. Time to find out what real black Americans think about Kamala Harris. Don't be late and please get the word out before we go live. Holy shit. They said, let's defeat the great black lie. Oh my gosh. Dom Luker. Good job. Thank you. The breaker of narratives, the guys doing the Lord's work out there. Mr. Kraft, I grew up in the ghetto and I'm still a white boy. LOL. Yeah. I mean, it just doesn't, it doesn't. SJW guys, she identifies as, that's what it is. I'm so sorry. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. It's just her identifying a certain way. That's what it really is. But yeah, she doesn't seem to have any tie to uh, being black other than a bit of melanin in the skin. And I will say when I get in the sun long enough, I get darker. And then, I mean, I guess I could identify as Nigerian, right? I could identify as whatever the hell I want to be because that's the game. And then I can make political gains based on what, uh, what boxes I'm able to check after I identify as blah, blah, blah. Thank you for watching this clip of the ThoughtCast. Catch us live on Rumble, 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. And if you want to hang out with the Freethinkers Rebellion, you can check the gaming channel as well.